All right, guys, welcome back. Shallowing the club, it's always a big deal in golf. How are we gonna get this club to shallow out like the pros and then come down squarely so we can really compress that golf ball? And I think a great idea to way to think of this is to shallow it with gravity. And in this video, it's gonna help you to stop getting that casting motion, stop coming over the top and kind of chopping down into the ball. So let's talk about first what shallowing the club is, and then we're gonna talk a little bit of physics. We're not gonna to get too complicated. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break it down really simple on how that's actually gonna happen. So when we shallow the club, what that means is, as I'm coming into the top of my backswing, that club is coming up at one angle, and then as I come down, that club shaft, or the center of mass of the club, the balancing point of the club, or I would like to think of it, I'd like you to think of it, an easier way to visualize it, is just as the sweet spot of the club. That needs to begin to shallow out lower, and then to come down on a nice kind of inside to square, back to the inside type of a plat path or a plane. So everything's nice and consistent as we're coming into the shot. Now, why is that important? Why would I care? And in reality, all that means is that's the angle that this club would work best through the ball to hit a nice square shot and to have the sole of the club working nice and flush with the ground. So when you're taking divots, do you have those perfectly shaped square divots? Or does it tend to be that your toe's digging down in the ground and the right side or the outside of your divot is a little bit deeper, kind of causing it to look kind of angled? Ideally, we wanna have that kind of dollar bill size, perfectly square divots. Now, as I shallow this club, I'm coming into that angle, it's gonna roll right down my right forearm as I'm coming into the downswing, and then it's gonna go squarely into the ball. And like I said, the, the club's gonna be nice and square and hit that good, clean divot. If I'm steeper, I'm over the top, I'm gonna to tend to be, when I'm steeper, to cast the club. So part of shallowing the club out is also giving you a big looking angle of lag. So if you're struggling with lag, when you're looking from face on, if I'm going this over the top, I don't look like I have very much lag at all. If I take this angle and then shallow that out, now it looks like I have a ton of lag. So if you watch players like Sergio Garcia, really shallow in the downswing, tons of lag, and also a great ball striker. So that's what we're shooting for. We're shooting for this club to shallow out a bit in the downswing. Now, how is this actually gonna happen? And it really has to fight the urge of hitting with the right hand. So let's talk about gravity for a second. If I have gravity, you know, pulling my club down toward the center of the ground, if I just let this club drop, or let's say I have it at an angle like this, and I just let gravity drop the club, it stays constant the entire way down. So when that club drops, it gets lower, but it doesn't shallow the shaft, doesn't shallow the angle of the shaft. I can let gravity shallow the club though. If I keep my hands nice and soft, what's actually happening here is when I'm holding this club still, gravity is pushing the club down uniformly, equally, just like we just looked at, and I am applying a force, a vertical force, to hold this club where it's at. So if I let go of that force, my hands drop, the club drops. I'm also applying what's called a couple. Now this is gonna get a little bit complicated here for a second, a little sciencey, but don't worry, stick with me. I'm gonna make it really easy to, to, to feel in the end. So a couple just means that I have my left hand on the club, it's working one direction, and my right hand is on the club and it's working another direction. So here, for example, my right hand is pushing up on this club this way. So to test that, if I was to hold on with my left and I let go of my right hand, you'll start to see this side of the grip falls downward. Right? If I was to do the same thing, my left hand is pushing down on the club the opposite direction. So my right hand was going this way, my left hand is going the opposite direction that way. So if you watch this side of the grip, if I let go with my left hand, that side of the grip moves up. So my left hand's pushing down, my right hand's pushing up, and it's, count, counter, it's balancing each other out, it's canceling each other out. So if you think of it kind of like a wheel, Look at my left hand's going down, my right hand's going up. That's the kind of the force I'm putting into there. So this is working throughout the golf swing. These are always going in different directions depending on what I'm doing with the golf club to get the club to work the way I want to. So again, we're getting pretty far off the deep end here. What the heck, should, why do I care about this? Why would I even ever want to get that technical in the golf swing? And it's, you don't have to get that technical, but it is nice to know so that we can understand what we need to do with the hands. So if I want to take my hands and I wanna let gravity push this club down a little bit, what do I have to do? I have to loosen up my right hand. The natural tendency for players that come over the top is to take this right hand to push out on this grip really hard and start casting that club. That causes my left wrist to bow, that causes my club to steepen up and come over the top, that causes me to lose lag, makes my right elbow pop up like this, it gives me a chicken wing as I'm coming through contact. 
a lot of things that are happening later on the swing start right here in the transition. So in the transition, if I want to shallow this club, I have to apply a little bit of upward force with my hands and I have to relax this right hand. So this right hand is pushing this way, keeping that club from dropping down. If I relax this right wrist, watch what happens. You're going to see my left wrist bows a little bit. Look at the top players in the game. As they're coming through contact, that left wrist is nice and bowed, getting some forward shaft lean. If I let loosen up my right hand and that drops down, now my right wrist starts to bend back. That's called wrist extension, or it starts to fold a little bit. People call it different things, but we're creating a bigger angle there. So by letting that happen with some gravity, letting gravity just push my right hand down, I'm releasing the, the tension in my right hand, letting that soften up. Now that gravity is pushing this club down. I'm allowing that to happen with my hands by loosening the pressure in the grip and it's shallowing out the club. Now I have a lot of lag. I got forward shaft lean. I'm coming down shallow. I have this wrist angle in a good spot at impact. A lot of really good things happen there if I can just loosen up that hand in the transition. So let's take that to the test now. Let's actually make it a real drill where we can get something out of this instead of just a bunch of sciencey mumbo jumbo here. Let's go to the top. And I want you to go to the top of your swing and then I want you to loosen up that right wrist and let the gravity push down on the club head, push down on the face to drop it down. I want your left wrist to bow a little bit, at least be flat. So bow would, would be great, that kind of sensation. And I want my right wrist to bend back a little bit as I'm letting this happen. Now from there, I'm in a good spot to where I can just swing all the way on through to my finish. So I want you to do this in a, a two-step drill. Number one, we're gonna go back and we're gonna pause. Number two, we're going to loosen up and let that club fall and then swing on through. So I'm going back to the top of my swing, pausing, loosen that up, and then swing on through. For those of you that have a hit urge, really want to muscle through there and start to cast the club, it's going to be an awesome drill for you. So let's go ahead, do about 15 or 20 reps of that, just in slow motion, just pausing, letting it fall, swinging all the way on through. As you come to your finish, I want you to make sure that you come all the way on around the shot. I don't want to do one of these where I let it fall and then I go back to address. I want to actually pair this up with how that's going to allow me to swing through contact. And then once I've done 15 or 20 of those and I'm feeling pretty good, I feel like I'm going to hit the, I got a good rhythm with it. It built up a little bit of muscle memory, if you want to call it that. Now I can go ahead and recreate that same feeling in the golf swing. There we go, guys. Best of luck to you. Let gravity do some work. Take that right wrist out of there. You're going to shallow the ball or shallow the club and compress the ball a lot more in the future. All right, guys, hope you all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an awesome bonus for you. We all want lots of lag in our golf swing. It's so crucial to have tons of lag to be able to get that high club head speed and to be able to drive it past your friends. I'm going to play a preview from one of my most important golf lag videos. If you're on a desktop device, you can go ahead and click the link that pops up on your screen. If you're on a phone or a tablet, you can go ahead and click the i card and you're going to get instant access to that video. Plus, you're going to get instant access to five videos from our top speed golf system. Good luck to you guys. Go out there and rip the ball. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only going to max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.